In a film about a creative person and their work, the expected formula is something like this. There is a dream, either deeply held or slowly awakened to. There is a mentor, someone who opens the way for the artist. And there's struggles, setbacks and obstacles on the way to achieving that dream. But the dream is realised. They leap over the stage, take their bow, and they make it. Monomyth 101 applied to making art. Wild Rose, interpreted as a making it creative story, appears to fit that bill. Rose Lynn starts at rock bottom, leaving prison in the opening minutes of the movie. She reunites with her kids, her mother, and her lover. She reclaims her shoebox of dreams hidden under her bed. She goes back to her old gigging spot to get the band back together, and all the while, she's aimed at Nashville, the ultimate end goal for an aspiring country western singer. You taking the piss? No, <laughs> not at all. Why do you say that? Country and western. Oh, it's just country. Ah, right. A country singer. Got it. Kicked out of the club for bad behaviour, Rose Lynn takes a quiet cleaning job and strikes up an unlikely friendship with her middle-class employer. This is that mentor I was talking about, a concerned but capable voice that guides the creative towards their goal. With increased access, Rose Lynn meets country royalty, gets a great opportunity, messes it up, but through reconciling with her mum, makes it to Nashville anyway. That's the end of the third act. Family drama resolved. Dream achieved. Movie done. Roll credits. Except that isn't it. Throughout Wild Rose, the idea of making it is interrogated through Rose Lynn's interactions with others. On a trip to London, she gets drunk on the train and loses her bag, jeopardising her appointment. She meets with legendary country DJ Whispering Bob Harris in what might be my favourite cameo of the year. And they talk about her work. He's surprised that she doesn't write her own songs. In these encounters, Rosalind's preconceptions and misconceptions about success, and her own personal issues, provide obstacles to her achieving her dream. This is where Wild Rose doesn't just tell a story of an artist making it and achieving their dreams, but interrogates exactly what we think making it is. Rose Lynn seems to be under the impression that making it will make things easy, and is seeking to follow an established path instead of making her own. When Rosalyn gets to Nashville, she attends the Ryman Auditorium, a famous venue, and sneaks on stage to sing. It's a beautiful moment that totally transports the audience inside Rosalyn's fantasy, aided by star Jesse Buckley's wonderful voice, which lends depth and passion to Rosalyn's dream. But as a security guard remarks, You would not believe how many people do that. Rosalyn doesn't stay in Nashville as long as planned. She heads home and buckles down to the real task of making it, creating her own art, speaking with her own voice. Writer Nicole Taylor is drawing on her own experience here. She wrote Wild Rose while working a job she didn't like in Glasgow and listening to a lot of country music. And despite Wild Rose being one of her first projects, it took years to come to fruition, during which time she worked on other projects to further and develop her own career and artistic voice. There's a time jump at the end of the film, and in its last moments, we can see that Rose Lynn has made it. She's on stage, but in Glasgow, not in Nashville. She's singing soulful music, but it's her own. She's made it her own way without following an established path, much like Wild Rose's deviation from the accepted plot of creative movies. It's a powerful message that resonates with real experiences of people who have tried to achieve their dreams, and foregoes a more conventional, Hollywoodized route. And that's just a single reason why I think Wild Rose is one of the best films of 2019.